Hello, everybody, and welcome. April 9th, 2021, Jerry here, wishing you all the best, and I uh, hope everything's going good for you. Just wanted to take a look at CELC. And now, I posted this yesterday as a post-market winner, so it was the highest uh, in post-market uh, and I, I was looking at it today, and man, it hit number one. Currently at 57.23%. Huge gains. Uh, so let's relook at the chart here today. Let's see, this is uh, yesterday's uh, video that I did, and we'll just get rid of this real quick. And go right to the, uh, oh, by the way, this stock... Uh, the reason why it's so big, if, if you don't know, is that uh, it had a deal with Fetzer worth, I think, th what was it, $380 million or something they're investing? $330 million. There it is. Uh, Fetzer came in with this company, and they're going to try to do some great things for breast cancer. So one of my favorite uh, things in the world is to try to prevent this cancer that that hurts so many people if we can just figure out what's going on with us and and try to cure us and uh i think longevity of the human race is is, is necessity number one so uh, we're a great race of people and uh you gotta love humans you know so here we are on the uh enough of that uh we're gonna go to the monthly chart and see that uh, it took a huge high back here in uh, 2018, and then, oh, there we go. There's the end of trading today, and, uh, you know, it just it just dumped for a long time, and so it recently has gotten a lot of interest, and this uh, this deal is, is doing them well, so that's great to hear. Let's see. It's a daily chart. Yesterday was uh, a big day. It, it had already done well this year. As you can see, it's up to $18 this year. So this bounce back is, is no joke, but the, I, I don't think I've seen a MACD like this for a while where it just does a huge shoot up. You can see right here on the MACD that it bounced off the line and... Uh, stayed bullish so any anytime it bounces off this line it, it's considered still bullish so you can see right here it was bearish then bullish huge bulls but but it had to take a rest it had been it'd been running for a long time and so a uh, short little spout back up through the line bounce back off it and man at that point on the daily that's looking like a buy right there so pretty simple Let's go to the 15 minute today and see how it fared. Now, here's the lines for each day. And you can see, like, there wasn't a lot of movement right in there, but it, it got some movement, didn't get much. So you can see how this thing uh, kind of like takes a big move and kind of sees how other people react to it. And then uh, no one's, you know, trying to dump it, then. You know, it, it leads to a, a rocket launch like it did uh, yesterday. And uh, how big that was, that was ridiculous. So, uh, post-market, it was a huge gainer. So, uh, today, though, you can see right in here that the MACD hadn't got fully exhausted. But did, look at that, it bounced right off the line. And uh, that gave another buy indicator. Like it was, it was probably time to buy right there when it, when it, when it bounced right off there. So where's the bounce? The bounce is right in here. You can see it. Oh shoot! So you maybe want to take it right in here. And and, and if you did, it was too late to get some real value. But you know, if you had your, if you were set to to pick up at 1766 it would have probably grabbed you for a quick split second before it went all the way up like a rocket so it's nice to, to catch these and, and uh, if you looked at my video yesterday you would have uh, been looking at this this morning and figuring out like you know if you're using the MACD you're probably thinking wow it's a great time to buy so only one indicator reinforcing this i wish i knew this when i first started about the macd how it shows a lot of uh over exhaustion and over buying and selling you can see right in here now see this red oscillator 
Now that shows that it actually reversed on the oscillator right in here. You see that? Right there. And that's right in this area. So it already had completely dumped, but was starting to show the red at that point. And so by the time it got to here, it was already starting to come back up. So if you, you, were, you were watching this and you were seeing, wow, it's, it's coming down through these two red lines right here. And, uh, and, and now it's the oscillator on the bottom, the red one, uh, is starting to, to gain some momentum. And, and this is when you want to start looking at your screen and seeing, is this thing going to rebound for, for a big gain or not? And look at that, six bucks right there. Boom. How many, how many minutes was that? Probably one. <laughs> so that's that's a big gain right there so let's keep going and take a look at the five minute today let's see how it's doing a lot of price volume here let's check the price volume the low high is uh, 20.81 it's way above that it's look at this it's keeping its highs for the day you gotta love that there's a, there's a line here there's the high there's the low of the day, and this is probably where it entered the market. Now, if I want, I could turn on, uh, let's see if I have it here. Here it is. I'll switch this on, and it just marks it for us. Here's here's where it opened. It opened here. There's the high. It tracks the high and the low, and uh, you can see right now it's above where it opened, so in, in after hours. So right there at the end of trading, it stayed above it so that's a good sign that maybe on monday that this thing's gonna take a take a little rocket ship again so uh let's uh, go to the uh two minute and uh <laughs> my cat's meowing behind me uh let's take a look at the uh shh. take a look at the uh time and sales here and we're not seeing there there we go there's a big one 2324 was right in there uh you could probably probably like this sale right here on the volume so i got these i mean i like to look at these indicate i'm not like constantly look at these indicators but it does if you look if you if you understand them all you can see things that you wouldn't see just by looking at it for the first time so you know, if I put all these indicators on this chart, I would I wouldn't have a chart. So, uh, not too long ago, I realized that I could break these apart. You know, like last year, I realized I could just break these apart. And uh, like the VWAP, this is the VWAP on the and I could change the minute. So here's the VWAP. It it's uh, bullish on the VWAP. Um, on the 15 second, it's crashing, but you know. That's just 15 seconds. So this is like in the immediate time frame you'd use these. If you if you were going long term, let's say you want you're like I love this company. I'm just looking for a good place to get in, and I'm not going to look at it for five, ten years or something, and in you or whatever a year, and, and but you want to you want to get the daily chart out on those and see, you know, you want to catch it at a, at the right price. So uh, and, and right at that moment might be the right time, but. Uh, sometimes you get into a trade, uh, it can it can go down or it can immediately go up. So you, you know, but the chances are it might be going down more than up, because uh, uh, when things get hot, they get hot and then they cool, and sometimes they retract. I remember getting to this uh, thing, the stock game, and back in the day, and you know, you jump in and uh, you know you're ready for a stock to get hot and it gets hot, and uh, you jump in and you know. It, you know, you catch a little end of the wave and, and before you know it, it's starting to dump and, and I would get out. Like I would just cut my losses, but I would wait a while before I did that. So I ended up losing quite a bit of money just by saying and at first I'd say, oh, it's just a little kickback. But if you understand the whole picture, sometimes these big highs can lead to, to giant lows, not below where it started, but you know, sometimes it's 50%. And, and when you're hitting 20% losses, sometimes you just bail. And, and then by the time it recovers, you're already on to other stocks thinking like, you know, you have at first you have it on your mind. And then after a while, since you're out of it, 
you uh, you just want to uh, you know move on and I kind of forget about it but uh, the thing is is like uh, you know you have something like Apple and then you start getting panicked because it pulls back so hard and then you know it's uh, at 120 when you pull out and uh, by the time it recovers it's at 105 you know, you might be onto a lot of other things and for not see the bottom. It's hard to see the bottom. It's it's very hard. That's why you'll see a lot of buying on levels, like in this chart. You see these buying at levels because it's hard to see. You know, let's say this was crashing in reverse and the buying was coming backwards. So you would see like a pullback and you'd see a lot of buying, and then you know maybe it pulls back even more. So then you see a lot of buying, and you know, people are trying to catch these bottoms, but, you know, if you're trying to catch a bottom, you might want to start off with just one stock, you know, start off with one, wait a little while, is it going up, is it going up, okay, now I should, should invest, you know, and then instead of, you know, dumping your full hand into this stock, you know, buy one, you know, wait a day or two, see what happens. If it starts to go up, maybe you should think about adding more, but, you know, a lot of times these stocks, you add a you know, you go into them thinking everything's great because everything looks great. And then, boom, for no reason, it, the hat just drops from, you know, you lose it. The floor just drops from underneath you. And and you want you scratch your head wondering, this thing's fixed. But, you know, the thing is, is uh, if you don't understand these indicators, you could be buying on the top and, 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 like, it could cross over on you and you could be screwed. Now, Take a look here at CELC, right in here, let's see, right where these cross in here, you know, let's say you're taking the stock, but it's leveling out at this point and going up. You see how this mat, this isn't like going straight up because there's a lot of buying and selling and, and you know, that's the thing. This would be hard to scalp a, a stock like this going up and down so much uh, with only a 50 cent movement, it looks like, at a time. And, you know, you, you probably end up losing money trying to scalp this one going up. So uh, the smart money was just believing in it, looking up the company. Why did it go up? It had great news, lots of great news. So not a lot of reason to worry and even watch it. You know, it's one of these, okay, this one's going to probably do great in the future. So in the long run, you, you know, you, you don't want to look at this and try to scalp a stock like this, you know. But if you were smart, you know, you, you could you could scalp it if you were like, watching this big dump right in here uh, and then at seven o'clock it hits big pintails here on the two minute you see that that's a great indicator that it's bottomed out uh, a lot of selling but no buying in this area so it shoots this candlestick back up to this point and, and that's where the buying starts and 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 doesn't go back down. I mean, it'd be a little crazy you could probably scalp a little in here but it's it's a little testy look at all these pintails the true uh, buy-in would be right there. And how could you tell that that was a real shoot-up and not going to come back down again? Well, the MACD really helped confirm that, didn't it? It started separating away at that point, and, and, and the oscillator started going off right in here. So uh, MACD, once again, saves the day. If you're in here when it wins, it's going to bottom out. Oh, it looks like right in here, it's going to bottom out right here. Oh, no, it's not. Look at the MACD. The MACD is saying it's not it, it, It's not even crossing the line yet. So now you, let's say, okay, instead of worrying about when do I get in, you watch the MACD crash, 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 and never crosses over, and then it starts to loop up right about here. And at this point, it's got your attention, and it marks the spot where the, where the big pintail is. And that might have been a good indicator to get in and, and then not worry about trying to get out because the MACDs keep keeps it going. You see that? And but right in here, you know, now it's starting to get a little iffy. Let's say you're just watching the MACD. This thing's crashing. See it? It's crashing, but it's not going the MACD isn't going down, it's going sideways. So what's that telling us? That that it hasn't crossed the line. It never crossed. It, it gave it a little kiss right there right before it blasted off. I mean, talk about a great blast off right there. Now that would have been a good scalp. Try to get out here, you know, instead of up here. 
But if you try to start getting out of here, you got to start selling your shares. And maybe by the time you actually get out, it could be right there. So you got to be careful that you don't want to play your out for right there. You need to start getting out. As soon as this big, look at this two minute thing just goes blasting. And, and, and who knows what that looked like at that moment. But, you know, all you can see is the after effects. But, you know, it could have been, you know, doing some of this crazy crazy stuff before it actually got up to there you know did it just shoot up? I, I i bet it just shot up it never came back down until it just got so exhausted right here at this tip now what's going on here now if you look at the macd look at this it's starting to separate at this point this isn't good when we start to get a separation and and look right in here at the very top you can start to see at one point if you're watching the macd this oscillator started to, to get a little bit smaller right in this area which would have confirmed probably time to get out Mike D's exhausted look at this it's exhausted it already had a huge high and then it goes into this bull or bear run for a while if you were just watching the MACD you'd probably be like okay maybe it's time to get in right about here and look at that right right there it starts to go up and look at where all the money was look at where everybody bought huge volume in there huge 1945 people that was a steal because the macd was ready to go again and look at it it bounced off it and, and kept high so it's finishing today in a bull a bull runnish to to run more on monday i think but uh you know, it's just opinion that and a nickel get you nothing so you know, it's just how you can see. It's how you look at these charts, too. I'm sure everybody sees these charts. Even if you read, what's the chart? Or what's a VWAP? Everybody reads it. The human mind, everybody sees things differently. That's why we're not all the same. If, if we all saw things the same, we'd probably be the same. So not only are we so different, but we see things differently. So what I see here is it crosses through this VWAP, bounces off it, and stays bullish. You know, this moving average uh, is, is, isn't bad. 20-day moving average, I believe. So, you know, there's all these different things that go into it. Look at the RSI, 55. Anything above 50, that's bull, or a bull run right there. The st stochastics running up. Uh, you know, you are getting more uh, buying than selling right now in the 15 second. Look at that. Right at the end, uh, it's 100% buying. So, it's in 15 seconds, though. But if you look over here, these are increments of 15 seconds. You can see there's some high buying over here. There's some there's some selling right at the end too. So you know you, people want to get out at the end, but it's going up and there's open interest in this. People are interested. New money could be coming in. It's showing it right there. So money flows coming down right at the end. But these are 15 second increments. This these are things you might want to look at right when you're in a trade. You're trying to scalp something for you know trying to. Get your 50 cent up and uh you know these things help when you see them all together reinforcing uh each other they got each other's backs in some ways you know it's it's uh adx another great one volatility ultimate oscillator uh, another money flow here so it's not that you're really looking at them but if you start to wonder about your candlesticks and your volume you might want to look over here what's going on you know like if you have this chart open and you start to spread it apart, the, the MACD gets pulled away and looks a lot different. But when you have it over here, pushed together as much as it can, now it's given a true indication of what it really is. Over here, it looks, ah, oh, it's, it's this and that. It's, but you need to pull this thing in tight. You know, you need to see it. And uh, it's quick action in here. So look at this, up and down, up and down. Look at the MACD following it, just like a champ. Bull bear, bull bear. Look at this. Up and down through the oscillator. It climbed, but what other indicators could you have thrown on to help that? Well, let's say you put on the, uh, I don't have them here, but it's the RSI and the stochastic. These help back up the MACD. Let's put the RSI on. There we go, boom, it's showing overbought situations where you should be cautious. Let's see where this one was, right at the top. Look at that, then it crashed. This one, right at the top, then it crashed. 
So you see what I'm saying with that one? I'll throw the stochastic in there. And, and I like to do the uh, slow because the fat, I mean, the fast is uh, ridiculous. It's, it's, it's moving really fast. And you should use that to get into a trade. But I always think defense is better than offense in the stock market. So we, we shall use the offensive our defensive move with the stochastic slow. It moves a little slower, smooths it out, and you can see, okay, is this really exhausted at this point? Well, the stochastic's confirming it. You know, if the stochastic, if they're not all lined up, you know, is overbought, and, and you know, let's look where it crashed. It crashed right there, right there where maybe you should be thinking, okay, the RSI isn't completely down to the bottom, but the stochastic sure is, and look at the MACD, it looks like it's crossing at that point. So you see how this can help you take a better trade than just looking at candlesticks and volume? You got reaffirmation, so you're not second guessing yourself. You know, yeah, this isn't hundred percent true, probably. You know, you gotta you gotta see like everybody sees it different. So in the moment, it's gonna feel and look a lot different than looking back at these charts and what happened today. You know, but you can look back and you can go, oh, well, it got over, uh, it got red right there, man. And the stochastic's fucking exhausted. Excuse my language. Uh, and then, uh, you know, you're starting to get this separation on the MACD that isn't good. You know, you, you need this like a uniform, tight little two two jet airplanes flying together is, is a great, like this right here. Look at the last one, how it's keeping tight. And, and, and now at the top, it's it's taking its uh, toll. What What happened here? Why is it getting crazy? Well, it's after hours. Anyway, hope this uh, helps you guys take better trades. Because when I first started, I, I I looked at these indicators and they were just lying scribbles on a on a on a computer screen. They meant nothing to me. But uh, you know, you start with your candlesticks, you, and you learn patterns. A huge pattern is this pintail, and. Uh, and good luck to you guys. I hope this really helps you make better trades. Take care. Have a good day.